But let's start with those delicate flowers, otherwise known as political reporters. On the ABC's Media Watch program this week, they seem to think that journalists in New South Wales are putting up with a little too much. Last Tuesday, the Australian state politics reporter, Yoni Bashan, hit the front page with yet another damaging report. Berejiklian breach isolation test protocol. Apparently, the Premier's office wasn't very forthcoming with a response. And after some more good reporting from the Australian's Yoni Bashan, it's little wonder they were sensitive. As Yoni Bashan revealed next day in a front page follow up. Gladys Berejiklian entered Parliament and voted on a piece of legislation while awaiting test results for a potential COVID-19 infection. In which Bashan and the Oz repeated their allegations of... Repeated efforts by her office to disrupt publication of the article using threats and warnings that action would be taken if wildly inaccurate allegations were printed. If we were to publish this story, uh, we would encounter grief and I would be shamed for doing so. My Sky News colleague Andrew Clonell, who knows New South Wales politics backwards, joined in. Berejiklian's press office is run by Sean Berry, who once reported politics for Seven News. On Sky last week, Clonell called out Berry and the tactics of his team. And there's bullying and intimidation. And uh, my concern is that there is a dirty culture developing in this government and with this Premier. Really? We await to hear more, I think. But I've seen a bit of this argy-bargy over the years as a reporter and as a media advisor. And I reckon journalists ought to toughen up a bit. If you are lied to, expose it for sure. If you're threatened, certainly expose it. But if there are unspecified, tense and difficult exchanges, is that a story? Without specifics, it's just a whinge. Shouldn't journalists just suck it up as part of the cut and thrust of the politics and media game? I remember The Australian criticising me as a media advisor about 15 years ago because I dared to suggest in my voicemail that you'd be better off sending a text. Apparently that was rude. I reckon they should have congratulated me for starting a trend. But Paul Barry spots yet another scandal and he's taken the chance to raise one of his favourite bogeymen. Other press gallery players tell us the intimidation goes above and beyond usual media relationships, with one describing the Premier's approach to the media as Trump-like in its hostility. Trump-like? Really? Trump takes on the media himself, directly, on camera, in full public view. I reckon it's his strongest suit. Right you're, now, so, you're, so, you're so disgraceful. It's so disgraceful the way you say that. Look. What did you do with the time that you bought? Look, look. You know you're a fake. Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. I don't recall seeing Gladys Berejiklian ever doing that. But I'd love to see it.